Welcome to what is probably one of the most important Excel tutorials of 2021. We'll be talking about dynamic arrays. Now, dynamic arrays are only available in Office 365 right now, but they are one of the best things that has happened in Excel since I don't know when. I wouldn't go back to 2013 because that's when Power Query came out, but as far as the effect on Excel, dynamic arrays are actually more important because they affected how Excel fundamentally works. So in this introduction video, what we're going to do is first, we're going to look at how Excel has changed by the introduction of dynamic arrays. And following that, we're going to look at four new functions. Now, those are not all of the new functions, but we're going to look at four just to give you an understanding of how Excel actually changed. And um, let's just dive right in. So this is a table in Excel. And the most fundamental thing about dynamic arrays that you need to know is this. Once upon a time, a single formula or a single function within a cell could only return one value. Now you did have the array formulas that could do a bit more, but basically a single function in a single cell could only return a single value. Now that's important, a single value. And that has now changed. Now a single cell can return either a single value or a column of values or a row of values or an entire range of values. And this is very important. So now, you know, once upon a time, if I did this, if I said equals and then just said these 10, what, what would that do in Excel? What would I get if I just pressed enter? Well, once upon a time, what you would get is you would get an intersection of the range that you've selected and the row where you're actually writing your formula. So you would get three. The reason you would get three is because a single formula could only return a single value. Well, now you get this. So there was no fancy control shift somethings. It was just enter. But this formula returns an entire array. And now I could say, well, okay, do that plus one, right? What, what, what is this going to do? Well, it's going to take that array and it's going to take each and every part of that array and it's going to plus one on the value, right? This by itself is now brilliant. But this brought along two things, two things that you should be aware of. Now, first thing you should be aware of is do you see how formula only resides in this cell? If I go one cell below that, now the formula is still visible, but it's grayed out, kind of. And that is because this cell does not contain a formula. This cell's value at this point is defined by this formula up here. And the way you see that is if I would actually have some values in here, I would get an error that says spill. So what it would say is, well, there's a formula in here and it would want to spill over this range, but it cannot because this range has a value in it. Now, if I just remove that value, now it can spill, right? So the spill error, that is the first thing you need to know about the dynamic arrays. And now the second thing you need to know about the basics of dynamic arrays is actually this. What if I did equals sum of this cell? Now it's not intuitive, right? Because that cell by itself has a value too. But then again, it has a formula that defines the entire column of 10 values. So what would this sum actually do? Well, if it gave you the sum of the entire column, it would be kind of strange, wouldn't it? So what this does is it says, 
because that is the sum of cell I6. But now if I add a magic symbol, I get and everything that that cell defines, right? There's a formula in there and it could just be that cell, but it could define much more. And that cell defines all these 10 values. So now the sum function is gonna sum up all of those 10 values. I press enter and there it is. That's the sum of the entire range, right? So two basic, well, actually three basic concepts. First of all, a formula with dynamic arrays can now return more than just a single value. And I get a spill error. That's the second thing you need to know. And the third thing, when you need to call on those dynamic arrays, you do that by using the hash symbol, right? So we say this cell and everything that cell defines, right? So those are your basics. And now let's go to the first function that you need to know. And the first function, this is a new one, it's called sequence. Now a sequence function could simply say, give me a sequence of 10. And that's what you get, a one through 10. If I said, give me a sequence of a five, that's what you get. And right off the bat, if I said, give me a drop down list where I have five, 10, sorry, I need to put a comma in between, uh, 24, 36, and so on and so on. And then within here, I just say, give me a sequence of this cell, right? And what is this cell? Well, it can be five, it can be 10, it can be 24, and it can be 36. So a sequence function, do you see how brilliantly this changes all your simulation? and all your you know credit card calculations uh, mortgage calculations all your calculations have just become dynamic with a simple introduction of a sequence function because your models can now be operated by a single cell whether it's 24 months whether it's 36 months a single cell does that now right and if I go beyond this, let me just explain how a sequence function can be used to enhance functions that you already know. So this is just a simple range of 70 values. So there are 70 values here. And what I would want here is to do a sum of top, and let's say at this point, top five. Now, how would I do that? Well, what I would do is I would say, well, equals sum of large of, now give me this range, and that one is a given, right? So from this range, and now, which value? And what I'm gonna say is, well, a sequence of values defined by this. And what does this do? Well, this is a sum of top five values in this range. Then what is this? Well, this is a sum of top 10 values from that range. What is this? This is a sum of top 24 values from that range. And what is happening here? Well, what's happening is when I'm calculating this formula, see, what gets evaluated is the sequence of this value. And if I evaluate it, I get a list of one, two, three, four, five. And that list gets inserted into large. And large just says, well, give me the top one, two, three, four, five. So the top number, the second largest, the third largest, and so on. And what I get is, I get a sum of top five values. That is brilliant people that is brilliant and the brilliance of it is 
it's just sum and large. Those functions have been in Excel, I'm not going to say forever, but for a very long time. And now enhanced by the sequence function, look what they can do. A single cell can now return this. And now let's go to unique and sort. I love this. So I have a list of values in this one. And that is for each country, have I gone there or, or not? Now it's, it's a made up list at this point. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a function called unique. Now a unique function is brilliant. What it does is it says, well, give me all the unique values from this column. And there they are. But because it's a formula, now once upon a time you would have to create a pivot table and then, you know, create a list of values, but you would have to refresh a pivot table every time your data would change. If I now um, just say Aruba, I really want to go to Aruba. So let's say I wanna, there it is. It just got added to my values. And now I'm gonna combine this with another little function and that is called sort. And sort is very simple, it takes an array and it just sorts it in this case alphabetically right and do you see how brilliant that is those are just functions so if there was a value a added here there it is because it's a function because it's the excels calc engine it just gets recalculated every time and i'm gonna take that one of out and I'm gonna put the sort on this one I wouldn't really need to but I'm gonna do it anyway so I'm gonna put the sort around the unique function and now I'm gonna do this I'm gonna create a dynamic drop down from this list and I'm gonna say data validation let's create a list and I want this list to be a source now, how do I do that? Well, this list is actually defined by the first cell. And do you remember what I need to add? It's the hash. So I need to do it like this, right? So that cell and everything that cell defines and what I get is this, All right? So this is the dropdown from this cell. But now let's do the one again and look at this. It's already in there. Feeling the brilliance? I bet you do. So now we have this dropdown. And now let me show you something even further, you know, down the realm of believable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this cell. And what I'm going to call it is have gone like this. And now I'm going to put a filter down here and or actually let me rather do it just down here so I'm gonna say equals filter and my array is all countries free and I want to include all of those where the have gone column equals whatever I've selected over here there you go now, this should be one of the greatest things you've ever seen in Excel. Do you see how it returns a table? A single formula, mind you, a filter formula now returns a table. And a table that is still dynamic. So if I go with my wanna again, so I wanna go here. Well, that one is now here. And now I can choose it from here. And now it returns that row. I hope you found this enlightening and i hope that this gives you an understanding of how powerful dynamic arrays are and i hope it gives you an understanding that this is a game changer in excel because it changes the way excel works right and with that said this was the introduction and there will be a follow-up series 
which will get harder and harder well we'll go deeper into the functions themselves as to what they can do and give an even further uh, examples of how excel has changed forever and with that being said thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one